did. Lord, congregation, please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right, so to start with those questions that I just asked the kids. But before that, this is a good story for me, right? Because how many of you wanted me to get in that blue thing over there? <laughs> A lot of people wanted me in that thing over there, and I explained several times that I have this fear of water. So this is a good story for me because what does it say? <coughs> With water. God's never going to flood the earth again. That's good news for me. <laughs> and for you too. But to, to ask, answer those questions I asked the kids, right? How long were they on the boat? How long? 51 days. 51 days. 61. 61. How'd you get 61? 3 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, isn't it? 7 days. Was there se three sevens? Yeah, two sevens. I thought there was only two sevens. 54. But he didn't say that he waited. It doesn't say that he waited seven days after the raven, though. It just says that he sent the raven out and then he sent the dove out. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was at least 54, maybe 61. <laughs> we don't really know. But it was longer than 40 days. Right? We think it was 40 days. It rained for 40 days. Right? So they were on there a lot longer than that. They were on there for a long time, actually. It wasn't even 54 to 61. It was longer than that. Because it, if it rains for 40 days, the entire world is flooded. How long is it going to take for all that water to go away? 130 days. I don't know. God can do whatever he wants to. God can make the water go away like that if he wanted to. So. Does it really matter how long they were on the boat? No. No. Does it? And how many? What? Chapter 8, verse 3. 150 days. 150 days. Chapter 8, verse 3. It says right there. So there you go. Part of the story we didn't get. How many animals were on the boat? A lot. A lot. All of them? You could say all of them. Thank you for that answer. Whoever that was right there, don't don't see, right? Except for the fish. Except for the fish. How many of each animal were on the boat? Two. Or seven. These two. There were seven of some. Why were there seven of some? Because God said so. Because God said so, and because they needed them for food. Food. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. There was eight humans. There was eight humans. Well, there was at least five. If you watch the movie, it shows that Shem, or Ham, Jephthah, and Shem were married, and they took their wives on the boat with them. And it, I think that's in part of the story we didn't get. And the boat is 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits. And how long is a cubit? I'm actually showing you. Here. I'm actually showing you <laughs> how long a cubit is. It's from the elbow to the tip of your finger. So is that, a, is that a very good measurement? Uh, because mine is different than... Yeah. Depends on who's building how. I don't know how tall Noah was. So it could be an interesting boat, depending on whose arm we use. But all these things play into this story. When we think of Noah's Ark, what do you think of? You think of water parks. <laughs> that was a good answer. <laughs> How many of you that have kids had some kind of Noah Ark theme or Noah Ark play toys for your kids when they were younger? Right? Because we think of it as this as this great story for kids, right? It's all about Noah saving, bringing all these animals onto this big boat and saving all these animals, and it is. But it's also about the fact that not all the animals actually got on the boat. And there was a lot of people that didn't get on the boat. God got upset because he saw that humankind was doing what they shouldn't be doing. And he got to the point that he said, enough of this. I'm done. I'm going to get away, get, get rid of what I created, and I'm going to start over. Is that a story we want to tell our kids? It's a story that probably a lot of us have. How many pieces of wood have you thrown away, Doug? 
good. Yeah, you start something and you think it's going to go good, and then all of a sudden it turns to, and then you're like, okay, fine. And just, but that doesn't stop you from creating. It doesn't stop you from doing what you love doing. God, in all of this instance, finds in the midst of this hope in Noah, who was a faithful and righteous man who followed after God. And so he tells Noah, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to save you and your family, and you've got to help me save the animals. So build a boat, and I'm going to flood the earth, and we're going to start over. And he put in the sky, what did he put in the sky? The rainbow. And the rainbow is the sign of the promise that God is never again going to flood the earth, Right? God is never again going to do that. God is going to remember what he said he was going to do. God is going to remember his people. And God is going to be there with them as a promise of what's going to happen. Right? How many of you actually have dealt with a dark situation? You've been in a flood. Not necessarily a literal flood. You've been in a flood. You've been through the darkness. There's been something that's happened in your life that just seems to grab hold of you and thinks, thinks it's going to take you someplace that you don't necessarily want to be. Right? How many? Right? We, we go there. We don't go there by choice. We go there because that's the way that life happens. Actually, on this day, two years ago, that happened to me. <clears throat> I was a good one. This year ago, about two and a half hours ago, my life took a turn that could have turned really bad. But I knew that regardless of anything that happened, that God was going to continue to be with me. And that God was going to be with those who are. And that God was going to work in and through the situation. You see, we don't always know what the outcome is going to be. Noah had no clue when God told him that he was going to flood the earth what was going to happen. But Noah trusted God. And Noah built the boat. And Noah found the animals. And Noah did what God asked him to do because Noah, Noah knew that God was going to hold faithful to his promises. You see, this is about trust and the promise that God gives to each and every one of us. He's claimed us and named us as his children, and no matter what happens, God is going to be faithful to that promise. You see, even in that moment two years ago, when I didn't know what was going to happen, I prayed, and I asked God to help us. And I had family and friends around helping with this situation. And God worked through it. And God kept his promises. See, I can say this time and time again because I've seen it and I've seen it happen. I know that God is going to be faithful and that resurrection is going to come and that even when the floodwaters come up over you, that you don't have to be worried. I have to remind myself that all the time. We don't have to worry because God is going to see us. I want to end this morning with a quote from the Genesis commentary by Dr. Miguel La Chorus. When no hope was in sight and when all seemed lost, we are told that God remembered Noah and all the beasts and the cattle that were with him in the ark. Even if, unlike Noah, there is no happy ending, God still remembers. Even when crucifixion ends with death, God still remembers. Even when we shake our fist at what seems to be an empty heaven, God still remembers. Again, whether the flood occurred is written in biblical text is of little important. What is important is that in the midst of our own floods, when we are hanging on for dear life to a piece of wood lest we drown, God still remembers. We are never alone because God remembers. We are provided with the courage and the strength to either endure until the treacherous currents ebb or face death with dignity, knowing that no matter what eventually happens, there is resurrection. No matter what happens in our lives, God is never going to let go of us. No matter what happens in our days, 
God is always there. That's a sign of the promise of the bow and the clouds. It's a sign of the promise that's given to us each and every week when we take from this table. It's a sign of the promise that you hear all the time when you come here. God loves you and has named you and claimed you. And you are his child. And he is always going to walk with you. So never think that God is not with you. He always remembers you. He always loves you. And he's never going to forsake you, no matter what.